Good. <laughs> what up, what up? We are live. Welcome to another Growth TV podcast. Got my boy Mario here, and we got a special guest with us. His name is Carlos, and I'll let Mario take over and do all the introducing and all the fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, today we decided, we decided to have our first guest and everything, and um, fortunately, I was able to get him in there. Uh, this is Carlos Metlock. Star- he don't want to admit it, but he was a star at Eastern when I was there. As you see, I got the Eastern shirt on. I had to make sure I represented a little bit. But uh, when I was there, I believe it was his senior year, and uh, just balled out, man. And it was it was crazy. It was, it was a fun experience because I spent, like, the entire season – um, and then I, that's when I got real deep into the sports medicine scene and, uh, you know, obviously played at Eastern and then played overseas. And that's been, that was back in what, 2010, 11, 2010. Ooh. So Jeez. 2010. So it's been 10 years removed <laughs> since that time. And the last place you played was Poland. So, um, obviously you, you played here high school in Detroit, correct? Right. All right. And so can you just kind of briefly explain um, your 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 journey from like high school and college and everything and to where you are now? OK, well. Um, all right. So I went to Detroit, Detroit, Murray, right um, off Warren, the west side of Detroit. Uh, it was, I, actually, I really miss. I think about it in so many years. I really miss high school, man. It was <laughs> the funnest part of my life. But, uh, but uh, as, as we'll see, how did I get the transition from that to basketball, I mean, to Eastern? Uh, it was, it was a, 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 I don't know to say difficult, but, you know, uh, being able to go to Eastern or any college as far as, you know, getting recognized, you know, uh, the AAU circuit is probably what, you know, boosts everybody name to become something or, you know, get more, you know, more looks uh, into college. So that was kind of the case for me. Um, I didn't play, I didn't play, uh, I didn't play like the, as they call it, the circuit. I didn't play on the circuit until my junior year, going into my wow. senior year. Mm. Yeah, so all, the, most of the, the AAU teams that I played was local. We had to, you know, like fire, fight and uh, win tournaments and pay money to go nationally and, you know, travel and all that stuff. So um, I had a, a chance to play with a team called the Michigan Hurricanes. And um, they, they're a traveling team and, you know, they had some big names on the team uh, that you guys probably would know. Um <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, playing one su- one summer there, and then that's when most of the, uh, my offers and uh, attention came from the the colleges. Well, interest came from those colleges, and um, Eastern and South Alabama came down to, you know, my last two uh, ones that I chose from, and I chose Eastern because it was close to home. Being from Detroit, mm-hmm. actually didn't even, didn't even know where Eastern was, then you know, it was <laughs> 30 minutes from Detroit, you know what I mean? So, right. never heard of Ypsilanti, none of that stuff. <laughs> and um, I chose there because, like I said, it was close to home. And South Alabama was just, I didn't want to be that far from the family, you know, being that I was in high school and they was able to come to any of my games when they wanted to. So, I kind of wanted to have that same feeling. And, you know, Ramsey, Coach Ramsey, Charles Ramsey, the head coach at the time, told me, you know, he would build around me. Uh, I would be starting as a freshman, and you know, he he held his he held his word because after signing, that's exactly what happened. So that's how right. I kind of like transitioned from you know the high school to to college. So you 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 before you get into your transition after college, you mean to tell me you started all four years? Yeah, man, I started all four years. Uh, I didn't know that, man. I, I, honestly, I was like, when I came in, I, I, I knew, like, obviously you held that spot for a minute, but I didn't know you started from the jump, though. So you so you really were, how did you do in high school? Like, in actual high school play, outside of AAU, how did you play 
you know, if you remember your numbers or anything off top, like, how did you play then? Uh, I had a pretty good, you know, uh, high school season. Uh, I think I finished with, like, 17, 16, uh, 17 18 points, uh, probably, like, four or five assists. Uh, the, the thing is, we didn't we didn't go far in the States, so our names didn't ring bell. But my sophomore year, we went to the state semifinals with I shouldn't even be talking about because it it's like a heartbreaker. <laughs> but uh, we had lost to Rockford uh, in the state in the semis then. But you know our team was pretty good. You know we had some good guys on the team. But you know at that time Detroit basketball was like at the peak. It was like best guys are everywhere around Detroit. So yep. yeah. you know so when you hear names, you probably like oh he really can play. But you have to really see him, see him if, to see if he really can play because there's so many good guys. You know, we had to prove ourselves night in and night out every mm-hmm. time we step on the court. So, uh, and not being able to play on that circuit until my my uh, 11th grade year, I think. I think personally, I feel I could have went high major. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, but, you know, I just didn't get seen enough like most guys. Which is okay. I think I think my journey is still good, but I still want to. I, I I think about it at times like, man, what if I could have been playing on that big stage? And, you know, what what will my career be now, or how will my college would have been, career would have been then? You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that's basically you know how it was. So how how were things? Like obviously I was there with you your senior year and everything, mm-hmm. and. I just remember, like, you going nuts the entire season. I don't remember a game where you probably didn't get over 20 or, like, have a huge clutch performance at some point. It was crazy, man. Like, it's sitting in front row and everything. So, um, obviously, unfortunately, I got to bring this up, the whole Mac tournament situation where we lost to Akron. <laughs> uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you drop 50? <laughs> nah, it was 42. I'm sorry. <laughs> Close <laughs> enough. <laughs> hey, hey, it was like I'm tall. I have <laughs> but, you know, um, obviously it's a big game, and um, you're playing on a D1 level, and at a high level, you're in the max tournament and everything, you put on that performance. What, what was the transition like afterwards? Uh, did you have – did you directly go overseas? Um or did you like? Did you have anybody scouting you at the time your senior year? Since you, I like I gotta say I didn't know you. I didn't know you started all four years. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I mean I had a pretty good career thinking back. You know, just knowing the IQ and knowing like the statistic things of it. Like I really look back and like, dang, you really had a you know solid career. Uh, I probably average. Uh, at least hmm, probably 15, 16 throughout throughout my career at Eastern. Mm-hmm. Uh, my senior year, I averaged uh, 17. Uh, so going going into that, going uh, transition into becoming a pro, you know, I felt like, you know, I well at the time I can't say I felt like because at the time <laughs> I was like, what my senior year, I'm like, man, you averaging 17. Yeah, you go. It's gonna be easy for you. <laughs> and not thinking about it, like man, there's so many colleges, <laughs> high major dudes who are doing the same thing, though. Yeah. So I'm not really, I didn't really understand that stuff coming out. Mm-hmm. But uh, but you know, transition. I'm thinking, you just finished 42. Everybody mm-hmm. should know your name now. You know what I mean? And yeah. <laughs> it sure, sure was not the case. Uh, <laughs> so. After that, I uh, went to the the, G, the D League. Now it's called the G League. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then didn't end up playing a whole season there. Played only a couple games. End up leaving only because um, they needed to bring in a, a, a big guy. And now we already had three point guards. And me being the rookie, and um, they had to let me go because the other two guys was already there. Mm. Uh, was already there previous years at that. Mm. So uh, after that, uh, I was sitting at home 
for probably a couple of months. Then, uh, man, I just couldn't get no offers. So, mm. uh, well, my agent at the time was an NBA agent, but I forgot to add that into it. And uh, he had a lot of big names. So basically got all NBA names. And he tried to get me overseas with but like a Euro League and all that stuff, which I, I would break that down, you know, once I get to that part. But all big teams, you know what I mean? And they rarely take chances on somebody who's not a big name. Mm -hmm. So uh, they want, especially at the point guard position, they want somebody who has a name, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, to, to run the show. So he was trying to get me on those teams with, you know, the point guards who he had at the time, who they wanted, and they didn't want to go to that team. So he was trying to plug me in, which is great because they were doing it. But they like, Carlos, not like, who, who's that? Right. So they, <laughs> so it's like, and then, so they're not taking the chance. And me coming from a mid-major, you know, well, guys don't really understand, mid-major was, was not a big, you know, attraction until now. Yeah. yeah, you know, with John Moran and Steph Curry doing this thing, and mm -hmm. Damian Lillard, and all these guys who have proved that like, the mid major level is still have mm -hmm. talent. So, but I'm older than all of them. With Steph, I'm a year older than, mm -hmm. but uh, at that time, it just wasn't the, the deal. So, um, so they didn't, so long story short, they, they didn't mess with me. So I'm sitting at home and I actually started like uh, looking on websites. There's a website that called Eurobasket. For mm -hmm. those that don't know, Eurobasket is it's like the uh, it's like the website that you can look up people like that's playing overseas. You can mm -hmm. look up anybody who's playing overseas, go on Eurobasket, pull his name up, and he'll pop up. So for anybody mm -hmm. that'd be like, man, I play overseas. <laughs> line, just go in there and, and show if you're really playing over there. <laughs> but, I'm about to start uh, looking up people now. <laughs> yeah, hey, that, that's all you got to do. So a guy <laughs> get to tell me, yeah, man, I've been playing over here. And I'd be like, okay. i just go in there and look him up. <laughs> so, so that's the thing. But uh, so I just started going over there, man. And like the guys that I played, in, played against in college, I would see who their agents is. So I just contacted their agents, and then I started contacting them players. And a guy by the name of Romeo Travis, pretty sure everybody know him because of LeBron James. Mm -hmm. He's LeBron James' teammate and yeah. best friend. Uh, I played against mm -hmm. him in Akron. He, so I contacted him, asked him about his agent, and he got me uh, with the guy. And that's how I got overseas. And that was in the U.K. my first year. So... Mm. Playing in the UK, I was cool. The language barrier, English. So yeah. I was just happy to be going. It wasn't for no good money. Just me add that in. So it wasn't for the good money. So just able to get myself overseas. That's all I wanted to do is give me some film overseas. That was just my my uh, mentality. Uh, which God really don't understand. Yeah, you might not. Whatever deal come your way, especially when you don't have nothing, you have to mm -hmm. take any deal over there. Exactly. It could be a bad situation. It could be a good one. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In this, so in this case, it was an okay situation. You know, I'm in a country where everybody speaks English, so that was easy. Uh, well, yeah, so that part was easy. And then uh, the, the league was okay. So well, my thing is I just wanted to go get some film. And you know, show that I know I belong overseas. So that was that was kind of my transit. I don't know if y'all got any more questions about it. So I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna stop there. So I ain't trying to run the show. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely know. Uh, so I I also trained a guy who is currently overseas playing in Israel, and he was telling me how there are tears. So there are tiers to like what the, the respect that different leagues get over there. For example, um, we often heard about the league that the Ball Brothers played in. And it was like, well, they're playing the league where they're kind of going against guys who are uh, that they're almost like playing like rec center ball, like YMCA ball. And mm -hmm. so 
Uh, can you kind of like explain, like, are there really tears like that? Do people really, uh, are there really these, like, okay, they, they respect China over this, or they respect Turkey over this? Um, I'm sorry, man. I'm, so, I'm sorry to do this. <laughs> Morgan, somebody at the door for you. <laughs> My wife is doing hair, so I'm still <laughs> <laughs> no, we good. We that. We good. <laughs> no, but can you can you kind of briefly like it, are there are there really like tears to like uh, what there there it's like over there? Like is it for example playing and playing in one league? Are you gonna get more respect and more looks if you're balling out in that one versus if you go nuts in another league and they're like, well, it's against this kind of competition? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's definitely different. You can play out there. You, it's definitely different, man. Uh, that's what I was meaning. Like, if you got a deal, you got to take it if you have nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so for me, I was in a, the, that UK league, and it's not respected. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, it was, my thing is for me is, I had to just go do, do me. You yeah. know what I mean? So even if I'm going over there and averaging high numbers, yeah, I might not get no respect, but some guys gonna be like, "Well, he's still over there scoring." Yeah, exactly. He's still doing this, you know what I mean? Bas people who know basketball will understand. Like, well, I don't care what league you in, if you're doing mm -hmm. this, <laughs> you can cut you can cut that in half at another league, and it's exactly. still good numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah, that it, it is true. The Lith the Israel league is a respective league. So I know you probably wasn't trying to ask me that question just to let you know it's a good one. So he, <laughs> no, no, no. He, no, actually, I, I couldn't one. remember his name off the top of my head, but it's Sam Roche. I can't, I never pronounced his name, Roche. last name correct, but it's R-O-C-H-E, Sam Roche. He Sam trained Roche. at the facility that I trained guys at, and uh, he was telling me, like, yeah, I'm about to leave and go over here, and he was just breaking down to me how everything is over there. And I was like, okay, that's not too bad. You know, I didn't know it was like that. That's why when they were talking about, oh, the Ball Brothers are, you know, LaMelo scoring this many points, I'm like, hey, you scored that many points in a game. You still got to give props to them. And they're like, yeah, but you're going against, you know. Yeah, see, but people, they keep, they always trying to downplay them. Actually, I played against them there in that league. We, it's the, so, uh, well, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get back to you. Then I'll get back to that question. I mean, I'm gonna explain it. Then I'll get back to the the ball, bro, brother. Mm -hmm. But uh, so yeah, it's different levels. So different countries. If you can you can actually Google it. It's it'll kind of tell you like the level of countries as far as like uh, who's the best. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, I forgot how the order go, but like Spain, Italy. Germany, Russia, uh, Israel, uh, shoot, Turkey. It's like those, those are like the top, those, those are the best countries. Hmm. So, and then you have countries that's under them that's not, that's not as good, but uh, they have talented guys. Mm -hmm. So they still have some really, really good guys in that league. Because they, it's like, ah, oh, man. So, they, all right, so I'm breaking down a little bit more for you. So, gotcha. all right, so so now you have those top net, top uh, uh, teams that I said in, in, in those three countries that I just, just said, right? Yeah. So, within those top countries, there's uh, teams that play other leagues that's inside of those leagues. So for one, the the best league is Euro League. Mm -hmm. uh, so as y'all know, uh, Luka Doncic. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even know if I pronounce his name right. Luka, Luka. Doncic. <laughs> Luka. Luka. So <laughs> Luka was the MVP of that league, right? Yeah. At 18. So of an 18 year old going over there and playing at the highest. He, <laughs> this is the absolute highest that you yep. can play overseas, that tells you right there, mm -hmm. he should be doing what he's doing in the NBA, right? Right. So that's what people don't understand. So when people be like, well, he's not really that good before he was coming in, everybody that's playing overseas, like, well, <laughs> he's he really that good. <laughs> right. he, he's, he's really good because he's doing this stuff. He's on one of the top teams over there 
but he's really performing at a high level. Yeah. So people were surprised that he came in the league and was doing the same thing. It's nobody that was playing overseas was surprised. Yeah. So he playing in Euro League. That is the, the the best one uh, out of all the leagues that's in what's the name. But those teams are playing also in their respective countries. Yeah. So they are basically a lot of them be dominating they hold that country. But like within those within that league, they still not one of the, the top teams in that league. What? What? Okay, she's cool. Go ahead. Um well, they want to be part man. of the interview too, <laughs> man. <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> uh, so so they not really they one of the best in their league, well, the best in their league. But in the Euro League, they might not be the best. They might be top five or whatever. You know what I mean? So in this other league, like the Champion League, Euro Cup, it's all different leagues that breaks down. Wow. So if you're not one of those good teams, if you're not the best team, you're probably the second best team or the third best team, and you will yeah. play in one of those other leagues. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a lot of talent over there, man. And Man, listen, people just got to understand, like, so it's it's real. It's, it ain't right. Like, for instance, have y'all been watching this TBT tournament? No, I haven't. No. I mean, known about it. Oh, really? Yeah, it's on ESPN. So I didn't know about it. Man, a lot of them guys plays overseas, and y'all mm. can see if y'all watching it. It's actually a championship game today uh, mm. on ESPN. I think at seven. Okay. But if y'all go watch it, a lot of them guys play overseas. Man. And you would see the difference, like, oh, well, these guys really can hoop. Mm-hmm. So, but a lot of them guys ain't on the top teams. They just playing in whatever those leagues are. Yeah. Good teams. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. there's different levels. Now, the Ball Brothers. <laughs> so, like I said, my, my, last, my last time in Poland, I played, uh, we had played in, in that, the, uh, the Ball. The JBA? The, yeah. The, no, it ain't, no, not the JBA. They that was like a summer league thing. So when they went to Lithuania, yeah, they was able to you know create their own league when they was in Lithuania. Gotcha. Yeah. So what people don't understand, he did it for Lamelo. Mm-hmm. Lamelo was what 15, 14 at the time. Yeah. And it was like a package deal for Jello and Melo to go play in Lithuania. So he let them play. They let them create their league with the BBB tournament, whatever big baller tournament. Yeah. But they playing against the top players, supposedly the top players uh, from other little countries mm-hmm. to come play in that league. Now these guys are 16, 17, 18 years old. Hmm. So, yeah, they they kind of both of their age because Jello at the time was only 18. Yeah. So, yeah, they're not playing against the American 18-year-olds, but they still playing against guys their age. Yeah. So yeah. They, over, they over there killing, which yeah. they're supposed to do, right? right. If you're playing against mm-hmm. somebody your age, you're supposed to kill them to, to exactly. see who's the best. Yeah. So they get a lot of knock for that when they really wasn't, they really was playing their age. Now, Jello was also playing in the Lithuanian League with the grown man. Yeah. And, you know, he had... I think he was probably averaging like eight points, but he mm-hmm. wasn't. But it's still not a bad year for uh, a rookie coming in to play with pros. Right. Yeah. So they, man, they was knocking them all types of ways. But I actually played against them that team because our team went in over there to play it because our coach was from Lithuania, so he wanted to go mm-hmm. back home. And it was it was like doing one of our breaks, so it was a chance for him to go back home and you know, show his family his team. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I seen them guys firsthand and man, they just they just run through the mud just because they father, but <laughs> that guy, so, boy, so you saying now nah, he's legit. They cold. Nah, he's legit. Yeah, they can who they they no yeah. bum. They, mm-hmm. they really no bum. But LaMelo yeah. LaMelo is 15, 14, 15 years old and I seen I seen before he got to where he is now, like the talent he's showing now. Mm-hmm. But I seen like the guys really young. This young kid really gonna be good. 
Yeah. Like you can see that talent in him. And I don't know why people just be knocking, just they just do it just because, but Yeah. Like, he over there. Like going to have haters, man. <laughs> yeah. He he really was over there doing his thing. Yeah. How he's supposed to. It's crazy because he said that he's 15. Like, I don't think people really realize how hard you guys have to work and all the sacrifices that you guys put in behind the scenes. Right. People just see all the, you know, the all the fame and all the, oh, you hooping in front of the crowds. But talk about, like, the sacrifices that you had to make. Like, all the, oh, I can't go out with my boys this night. I got to work on my game. Like, talk about that yeah. aspect of it. Yeah, for sure. My wife can, can tell you the sacrifice. Of it. <laughs> she can she can give y'all an hour or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but man, it's just the balance of time, man. It's mm-hmm. it's I mean y'all seen, you know, uh God God rest Kobe. Yeah. But you know how his schedule was, man. It's I mean, it's insane with if you don't if you don't have the right tools to like, it's not enough time in the day. Yeah. So, for me, my schedule is, especially during the summer, I would give myself a probably a month off, and then mm-hmm. I'm working out every day all week. Yeah. So, <laughs> so now it's like, now my wife is getting irritated because I'm not trying to do nothing with them and mm-hmm. trying to worry about being ready to go back. You know what I mean? So, right. like, I, I would mm-hmm. spend the whole day just working out, get, get up in the morning, Go work out, come back home about twelve o'clock, and then. 12 you said o'clock. about twelve o'clock. So how early are you starting? Because <laughs> twelve o'clock is still probably, middle no, of the day. I probably, no, I probably don't start. <laughs> I probably don't start to about nine. But okay. last year my schedule was uh, I would get up at. We had to work out at six or seven. It was one of those times. Man, I forget. I think it was six six o'clock. So by the time about nine o'clock. I'm on my way back home, but I'm resting, I'm chilling, don't feel like doing nothing because I'm tired. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, that was just that was just strength and conditioning stuff. So, ain't no telling what time like I could have a, a random time on the court. So, if the trainer who I'm working with, like, man, I can't get in today, to be by I can only get in like at one o'clock today. Shoot, I got to go at one o'clock. You know what I mean? So it it will vary. Now once I'm in the gym, ain't no tell how long I'm in there on the court. So I could be on the court from I tell my wife every time she asks me, I'm like, well, I'm going to work out at one. She be like, how long you do that? Because I know he sacrificed. He really put in that work to you know get to where he needed to be. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, like you say that, and so um, a couple of topics we've hit on uh, previously. We, we talked a lot about, um, you know, just just taking the time and being patient and everything. And so, can you, if, if you're if you're talking to your high school self, and mm-hmm. you are where you are now, you know all the things you know, you know, in terms of basketball, just strictly basketball, what are some things that you will probably do differently preparing? To go forward, mm-hmm. I, you said earlier you would play a little bit. You would try to play a little bit earlier in like the circuit and everything, but um, with the Pistons and everything, um, that you know you, you need to work on jump shots. You need to work on conditioning. You need to work on free throws. Um, you're a guard, so a lot of the time your handles need to be worked on a lot more than other people. Um, what are some things that you would do now if you knew the stuff you know now based on your experiences? Nah, that is, that's a great question. Hold on, <laughs> what? What? Okay, tell them stop grabbing on the net and leave me alone. I'm doing something right now. Just give me an hour. <laughs> Just tell them, to, tell them stop grabbing it until <laughs> I come out there. Uh... <laughs> Uh man, that that is really a tough question, man. Uh, I know I can't. I, I do wish I could have played um, AU more, but I think like the knowledge of the game. Like I was growing up, man. I was so like I really was a nerd as far as like a, like the junkie. I was a basketball junkie. 
Yeah. Like, I really would know, like, I knew about uh, Doc Rivers and all of them when I was growing up. Like, you got to think, they they came up in eighties. Yeah, the late eighties. You know, by the time they got to the nineties, they was retired. You know, what right. I mean? like early nineties, early nineties, they was getting ready to hang it up. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was born in eighty seven, so you know, why would a eight, nine year, nineteen year old guy? How do you know about these guys? You know what I right. mean? Right. Mm-hmm. So I used to be, I really used to be doing like just watching basketball. Like once I fell in love with it, I was really tuned in. But like far as like the knowledge, I, I would say the college aspect of it, I probably would, I probably would have wish I could have met people who, oh no, I wish I would have talked to people who actually got a chance to play high major and, you know, uh, my decision making on going to a college or um, what to expect going into college. Like, I didn't ask none of those questions. I just mm-hmm. took everything head on, you know, just thinking like it's basketball. Ain't nothing I got to worry about. Right. Uh, so I, I didn't really think too far, think too far ahead about when it came to that. But I don't really know, man. Like, I really was. I really think I was polished. Ah, this is what I would have did. I would have <laughs> worked out. I would have worked on my skills. Yeah. Like the skill level, like the basic of basketball. I would have worked on that a lot more. Mm-hmm. Than, like that's all I do now. Mm-hmm. Like I just work on the basics. Like I yeah. knew I had I had a guy given ability to be able to play basketball naturally. But just thinking like if I would have worked on these moves, like, just, all right, so they have a, they had said something about Jordan or Tim Grover watching that Jordan documentary. Yeah. He like, Jordan worked on all basics moves. Yeah. Everything else was just natural. Yeah. So everything yeah. else came from the knowledge and his natural instincts on, like, this guy here, I'm going to spin. You know what I'm saying? Everything came natural. So for me, I think, <clears throat> Excuse me. I think if I would have just focused on the basics, not worrying about that crossover, uh, <laughs> trying to be at the time, at the time, and one mixtape was a thing at the time for me. Right. I remember that. Oh, yeah. I remember so, that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I was trying to do is the and one mixtape stuff. So, yeah. so you saying so, that um, being a guard, that th- those skill sets that you had, what Cause there are a lot of there are a lot of people right now. At bigs are shooting now. You got yeah, you know, a lot of people doing things that guards were doing back then. That you know, like for instance, we grew up on Shaq. We grew up on that traditional big man. We grew up on the Webers, the Shaqs, mm-hmm. the Garnets. Even though Garnett kind of put the ball on the floor a little bit, he still had his back to the basket. We grew up on Tim Duncan, you know, David Robinson, and all that. Um, and guards were those traditional guards like push the tempo get everybody involved be the floor general now you're seeing more guards become like scoring centric scoring mm-hmm. centric so like take take now obviously things are different now you have um workout plans different you got trainers who are more skilled to teach you things you were talking about that skill set as a guard what skill do you think was most important to you obviously now you know but, like, what would you translate back to the high school level? Like, what would you tell high schoolers who are like, all right, I'm a guard. Um, I can shoot. I can do all this. Like, I have all this God-given ability. But, like, there's a skill set that you're like, listen, if you do this, if you master this part of your craft, you'll get looked at a lot more. Or you're likely to get to that next level where you're trying to go. Footwork. Mm. <laughs> As a guard, yeah. footwork is, man. Footwork is so big that I really didn't understand. Like I said, when I was growing, when I was coming up, I was fast, so I can react to a guy real good. Now, yeah. thirty-three, <laughs> he, he didn't wear where it was. <laughs> so, like that footwork, man, that footwork is a key, man. Yeah, it'll set it it'll set you up to get past a guy 
mm-hmm. rather than that speed will. will. Now, guys, now, I don't even know if y'all even ever paid attention to it like this, but think about it like this. Kyrie Irving has the, one of the, the best handles in the league, right? Yeah. Now, I bet you not one kid focuses on the footwork of Kyrie. No. <laughs> His footwork is great. Steph Curry's footwork is it's great, impact. man. Yeah. yeah. Like, to be able to come off and shoot off dial screens like that and do all that other stuff, mm-hmm. man, it's, it's, it's good. Like, so next time y'all just watching those those two, let's pay attention to their footwork and how they on balance a lot and all that stuff. I wish yeah. I would have understood that. Yeah. 16, 17, and then seven, instead, instead of having to learn the hard way and I'm older. <laughs> and <laughs> now that my my most important attribute of my game has slowed down, <laughs> it would have been much easier back then with the speed. Yeah. It's funny because, like, now in the gyms, all you see is everybody doing is shooting half-court shots. Like, before this whole virus thing happened, I went to, you know, I got a membership at LA Fitness. Everybody's shooting air balls on these half-court shots playing full court. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, everybody can't be Steph. You know what I mean? Like you said, like, they master footwork. They practice, like, bending your knees and all mm-hmm. those other type of things, like driving to the basket. But people just think they could just watch it on TV and just magically do it when they get out there. Kills right. me every time I watch it. Right, <laughs> right, right. I- I mean, I, I can understand, I can relate because when I was a young kid, I was doing the same thing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, I, I understand it, but now it's it's crazy. I have a son who who's the 12 years old, so he do the same thing. What do you see people yeah. shooting and Steph Curry pulling up, pulling up for one step across half? Yeah. Like they think they think like, oh man, he's that good, but they don't yeah. know that they don't know that he's. Uh, been practicing that stuff too (laughs) in the gym he ain't just going on the court and just doing it right (laughs) so as you bring up practice um we're we talk a lot about mastering your craft and everything so Mm -hmm. what is i used to we used to have i used to have a drill or a game i guess when you were playing at eastern and i guess it would be like after practice before practice middle of practice whenever it was Two of you guys going against another two. And one person shoot threes going around the the arc. And then the other mm-hmm. person just passes. After you finish, they go and then shoot their three. First team who finishes both shooters, you guys win. Now, I want to mm-hmm. know how many shots are you practicing to get down your shot? Because a lot of people don't understand. They see <laughs> – we were talking about this in another podcast – when guys, when we watch NBA games, we watch college games. We're like, oh, that guy, he he's a scrub. Like he, you know, he sits on the he sits on the bottom of the bench, this and that, mm-hmm. you know. But what people don't realize is we're comparing them to other pros. Like we're comparing exactly. them to other like like <laughs> yeah, skilled exactly. players. We're not saying like, oh, he's a scrub. I'll go in there and beat him. No, that guy. Like we we look at Shaq and we look. I'm gonna use Shaq as a perfect example or Boban. We don't see these guys shoot a lot of threes. We don't see them shoot a lot of jump shots. But I have seen guys who don't take a lot of jump shots in games. They come out and do warm-ups. They're hitting everything they shoot. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. uh, I want to know, like, how many shots are you shooting on a given day, like at the ball machine or if you got somebody rebounding for you? How many? What's the most shots that you've got up? And then on top of that, I got to know, what's the most threes you've probably hit in a row without missing? Uh oh. Got <laughs> you on the spot now, man. <laughs> That's a crazy question. Uh, Most shots you shot in a practice session, and, and then how many threes have you hit in a row? Not in the game, but like just, mm-hmm. just shooting. Well, I do. I do. We, we, do, we do have to shoot a lot. Well, for me, it's all about rhythm. Yeah. I mean, pretty sure it's probably for any other. Uh, basketball player too is all about rhythm. Mm-hmm. So if you're not really getting shots up, I mean, you're really not gonna, <laughs> you ain't, you're not gonna get a, a feel. You're not gonna get yeah. a feel for shooting in, in in that spot or just yeah. shooting. Period. Mm-hmm. That's why you see guys who one year 
only only took three or four uh, shot at, well, three or four three attempts the whole season, mm-hmm. and then they come around, they shooting a hundred and fifty something that next <laughs> season. Yeah, <laughs> the reason they was working they butt off that summer yeah. to be able to shoot that three consistently. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't know, man. I really can't answer that question. I probably in a row. Mm, mm, mm. I probably knocked off thirty in a row. <laughs> <laughs> in a row. If I can remember third in a row, you know, you like you said, you shooting around the world. Yeah, probably three spots in a row because you're supposed to make ten most of the time. Probably three shot spots in a row. I knocked yeah. ten, ten straight, ten, ten, ten. And you said you guys have to get up shots. So what? You got to get up about five hundred. You got to get up a thousand. Like what? What's the what's the number that you guys are aiming for in terms of how many you have to get up a day? A day. Uh, well, for me. It's really no, it's really no number for me, uh, cause you in the gym, you can easily get up a thousand, like that. That's easy. Yeah, that's you know easy. <laughs> he so, said that. Like, so just, just, just think, just think, if you're going around the world, right, five spots. Yeah. One time, one time around is fifty. Exactly. Right? See, that's a Go lot of shots, around. though, man. <laughs> it, 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 seems, it seems like a lot, but it's really not. Yeah. And then you go back around, that's 100. So you're doing, so you're doing that 10, 10 times. times. <laughs> yeah, so like 10 times. But you got to think, like, within a workout, you're taking shots within the workout as well. Yeah. I so got you. you. I hear you talking, man, but, like, <laughs> I know personally, man, your arms go out, your legs. Yeah. Like, if, depending on the kind of jump shot you have, a lot of people don't know this, and why it's so critical and why people why I'm asking you this. A lot of people's jump shots depend on different things. So like for example, Ray Allen, his cat, like he pointed out a lot, his calves are huge and his leg okay. workouts are crazy yeah. because his jump shot requires his legs Athletic to be in, right. in great condition. Somebody's yeah. jump shot might can they they might need arm strength, shoulder strength, because a lot of it comes from their arms. They they might have a slingshot. Uh, you're a lefty, right? So you kind of like mm-hmm. have a different shot than most people, but you also mm-hmm. might require your legs. So that's what I'm saying. You saying that like it's not a lot, but I'm like, no, no f- shots. Is a lot. You, you, you're right. You, you are absolutely right. But <laughs> I didn't. I didn't say my arms wasn't hurt though. No, <laughs> I didn't say like, those legs. Those legs get to kicking in. Yeah. You really got to use your legs, you know, because that's really for me. Uh, it's all about legs, like getting my legs under me when I shoot. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like you said, doing those workouts, the legs starting to bother you within 30 minutes in, 45 minutes in, mm-hmm. you really got to focus. That's when the time you really have to focus in and, you know, uh, stay focused, focus on the mechanics of, you know, your shot. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it, you can get a lot of shots up. Like I said, just going around the world one time, you know, that's a hundred shots easy. Mm. But it, it keeps in though, man. It, it all you got it all goes in with the strength and conditioning too. Like if you doing the right strength and conditioning and all that stuff, mm-hmm. you ain't gonna you're not gonna feel it as bad, but you you still gonna be sore. Yeah. Mm. I'm interested yeah. to know what what's your what's your motivation? What's that thing that keeps you motivated each and every day? What's that thing that keeps you grinding, keeps you pushing? The love, the love, man. I, I still love, I love basketball. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, I, I have different things that drive me, you know, to make me love it even more. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not a kid. I'm not a kid no more, so I don't. So doing it for free mm-hmm. is not a thing no more. But, that. you know, when you was a kid, it was just you having fun. Yeah. So that was the first drive, and then... Uh, you know, college, it was, man, I got to do this. I want to get in the league. Exactly. And, you know, it, it was all different things. But now, for me, it just, I love it, and I have to put food on the table at the same time. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, that's still, like, one of my, my passions. Like, I love yeah. it. So, yeah. you know, the, the, the love for it have, have still have not changed for me. You that's know, cool. I still want to be the best, and like, all that yeah. stuff still moves me. That's cool, man. That's so cool. I, I, we were talking before about, uh, and it, I guess it kind of follows up with that question about the love for the game. Have you ever, within your career, have you ever considered yourself 
cheating the game? Like, did you ever take a summer off too long where you didn't improve on something? Did you notice something that you, uh, that you like, let's say, for instance, your free throw shooting? Did you ever increase that as you went along? Did you try to, did you try to turn down your uh, turnover ratio? Like, and if, and if it doesn't apply to you, have you seen that? And what do you think about that? Like, if you're, if you're translating into coaching after you play it, you know, what, what's something that you would advise someone to do to not cheat the game? Because if you love the game, you're not going to cheat it. You don't, you want to be the best you possibly can at it. You know, you're, you don't want to cheat it. So, like, what's something that you would do or tell somebody to do? If you're a coach or anything, you know, don't cheat the game, do this or, you know, how would you avoid doing that? Well, I don't. I don't never. I don't feel like I cheated the game. Like I, I think I gave every effort. You know, as far as like developing myself to become, you know, a good a good uh, basketball player. But mm-hmm. I think I think different players can answer it in different ways. Also, yeah, uh, be, because you know, if you a scorer, you would probably look at it like. Hey, I'm, I'm scoring. I'm still scoring at a high level, so I don't think I need to change anything. But mm-hmm. they still putting in that work to become that good scorer. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? But yeah. uh, I don't. You can't. This is like if you want to say to a kid, now effort. If you ain't putting effort into you know getting up, getting shots up, uh, working on. The little things to help getting yourself better. I consider that as cheating the game. Exactly. And you just going off p- pure talent. You know, yeah. you, you know, it's somebody in the gym that's putting in work, and you just at home chilling. But you have that that ability to just go out and do stuff. Like that's cheating the game. Right. Exactly. I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't think you making yourself better in any any shape or form because eventually it's going to die down, and don't keep mm-hmm. working. It's gonna catch up. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, I, at this age, at 33, I really don't feel like I cheated the game. Like I still think I'm I put in that work every summer. Mm-hmm. And of course it's it's there's some things that I should have worked on more. Uh, I've never been a bad free throw shooter, so <laughs> I can't I, I can't relate to that part of it. But uh, you know, like now as I get older, I kinda like focus on defense a little bit more. Uh, the turnover thing, I hate turnovers. Mm-hmm. So the fact that if I get three or four turnovers, I'm kind of I'm mad at myself. Yeah. You know, especially with a stupid turnover that I know I shouldn't have, shouldn't be making. Mm-hmm. So like I don't know. I I don't I really don't think I'm cheating my cheating the game. Uh, mm-hmm. I think the basketball guys is is happy. <laughs> like you, gave, you gave a good response I, I like that response that you gave in terms of like uh not getting up and putting in work you know and i i think that applies to a lot in terms of just anything like you if you're just sitting back and you're going off of ability you're just like i'm good mm-hmm. at this i'm good at that i don't have to worry about putting in the reps or anything like that that's kind of like you're, you're cheating whatever you're trying to go into you know yeah. like if you if you become a coach like if you become a coach and you're just like, ah, oh, I know the game pretty well. I'm not going to worry about my opponent because what I'm going to come up with is going to be sufficient enough. You're cheating the game mm-hmm. because now you're undervaluing your opponent. You don't know what yeah. they have, anything like that. And, you know, as far as, like, Terrell does with the speaking and everything, it will be cheating if he didn't work on speaking in front, of, in front of people, if he didn't work on asking questions or anything like that. Um, so it's, it's really good that you, you know, Gave us that insight, and you know, hopefully, somebody can take from that. Terrell, do you have any uh, other questions for him? No, no, he pretty much answered my question. I think you took my question when you asked the question about uh, what coaches and scouts look for in a point guard. That's one thing I really want to know because I do have a lot of well, I have a few people, ball players that watch these podcasts, and a lot of them want to go to the NBA or play basketball overseas, and they play the guard position. So, you know, what's that one thing you think the coaches are looking for? Besides foot footwork, is it assists, shooting? A floor like, general, a floor mm-hmm. general for sure. Uh, yeah. Most most coaches want want to have a point guard that can can run a team. Exactly. Uh, but it's it's a lot of other things that coaches look for. Uh, some coaches might want a scoring point guard. 
Mm-hmm. Some coaches that might want a, a coach that I mean, why want a player that can, you know, make good passes or you know yeah. a rebound the point guard or a defensive point guard. Yeah, it's all it's all it's all different types of point guards and other some coaches want them, some coaches don't. Yeah, but uh, which I can something I can tell a point guard. Mm-hmm. Be real, be rounded. Yeah, a, a real rounded point guard. Be able to score at yeah. times if you need to. Be able to mm-hmm. be able to set a team up if you need to, mm-hmm. and uh, just be a, a good solid point guard. And uh, if the, whatever coach that you have, if he wants you to do something else, you got everything in your arsenal to go out and perform that more than uh, the other stuff that you have. You know exactly. what I mean? So. No, I played for different coaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, me me coming out, uh, a lot of coaches wanted me to score. So mm-hmm. I had that ability to score. Yeah. And, you know, I gave them all in. Yeah. And at the time, I know my teammates wasn't happy just me coming out and just shooting every time, especially the <laughs> point guard. Yeah. You know, so I would I would make sure my teammates was happy. Yeah. And most importantly, if you were winning a point guard, if you – a point guard everywhere you go, y'all winning. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's that's even better. <laughs> yeah. One more question. One more one more selfish question I gotta ask for myself. Because <laughs> I'm I'm five five. Is there okay. any hope for short guards playing basketball professionally, whether it's overseas or in the NBA? I know you don't see a lot of them, but is there any hope? <laughs> hey, if you if you are if you are athletic scoring five five, you got a chance. <laughs> you got Nate Robinson hey, dunking, huh? <laughs> you gotta be a you gotta be a Nate Robinson. You just gotta be relentless. Yeah. If you're relent but for be honest though, if you were scoring at five five, man, hey, somebody gonna pick you up. That's how I see it. Yeah. You know, cause now like under right now it's about height, you know. Mm-hmm. That tall point guard now. So yeah. if you were a point guard, especially at that at that uh that height that can really score the ball. Hey, I'm guarantee somebody gonna take you. That's what's up, man. Now, now yeah. we're not gonna let you get out of here without well, a couple of things. First, I wanna ask one. Oh, you yeah. got one more, one last nugget for us. We usually end off on a nugget that we like to just give the viewers or the listeners. Do you have one nugget that now this is like a this is like an inspirational channel or just like uh, you know for anybody? I, there are a lot of different people who listen to this, whether it's uh, business owners. Somebody in school, athletes, uh, somebody wanting to get into speaking. Like, it's a whole different, you know, there's so many different genres that listen to this. Uh, you got one last, just anything to give to anybody that's, that might be listening to this? Man, uh, do it with a purpose. Mm-hmm. Got to yeah. do it with a purpose, man. That's that can yeah. be, that's as simple as it, could, as it can be. Like, no matter what you're doing, have that mm-hmm. purpose and passion behind what you're doing. If you don't mm-hmm. got it, if you don't have it in whatever you're trying to do, it ain't for you. Exactly. So, right. so yep. without you, you know, without you leaving, I gotta ask, who do you think's taking the title this year? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's hard, man. Them, them, them LA teams is kind of holding it down, to be honest. Uh. I don't know. I don't. I never go against LeBron. Never go against <laughs> Bronny, man. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I I can't go against LeBron, but I know I can't. I don't see nobody in the East doing it. So uh, I would say I'm, I'm going to say either the Clippers or the Lakers, but I'm not going against LeBron. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so in a nutshell, so, we're gonna say you going with the Lakers here. Okay, I got yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I got hey, it. We we go right. we go Spurs. Over here, man. Spurs. <laughs> oh, that's my, hey, that's my team. That's my favorite team ever. I, I, I'm one of those crazy Spurs fans, man. Hey, listen, Chris Paul. Chris Paul is my favorite player, right? Yeah. So I understand you, but you got to be reality, man. You got to, you got to, you got to come to reality with it. They not getting it done. <laughs> I said the Clippers, man. I picked the Clippers from the beginning when they, once they got Kawhi and they got Paul George, I just thought they were too deep. I thought that uh, if anybody had a chance against LeBron and AD, it was them because they had the bodies to throw with him and they have the counteractive scoring to go against it and they had the coaching. 
So I think that kind of like works in their favor. But um, again, man, we appreciate you taking the time out, man. Appreciate Everything. It, man. Uh, stay yeah. healthy. Of course, obviously, yeah. I'll be in touch with you, man. We got some workouts to get to, man. Because I gotta get you right for next season. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you still gotta send me them workouts. <laughs> but uh, definitely it, appreciate man. the time you taking out, man, and, and dropping some knowledge on us, and hopefully uh, it helps somebody. Uh, and then, like I said, we'll, we'll we'll be sure to share this. You can share it as well, and uh, we appreciate your time, man. Hey, no problem, man. Thank you all. Thank you all for having me. Uh, good appreciate. luck with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, hope y'all get to. You know, the highest point that y'all are trying to get to. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, and everybody, y'all both stay safe during this pandemic thing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's crazy out here, man. So, you know, yeah. wish both of y'all good health and, you know, good luck in the future. All right, All right man. man. I get yeah, y'all t- be easy.